It is a gorgeous blue sky day in Seattle. The two-time defending NFC champion Seahawks getting ready to start their home schedule against an injury-depleted Chicago team. Both teams are 0-2. Phil, a thought before kickoff. Hear the crowd. Cam Chancellor's back. The Chicago Bears have a backup quarterback. A lot of things in favor of the Seattle Seahawks. This game being broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. Hauschka puts it on a tee to send it down to Mark Mariani as the Seahawks won the toys, toss and took the option to defer. Hauschka. will start Jimmy Clausen and the Bears at the 20-yard line. And here he is making his 12th career start. His Jay Cutler is inactive today with the hamstring injury. His offensive line includes a feast on that right side. Going from guard to right tackle is Kyle Long. And Wilson will start for Alshon Jeffrey, who also is out with a hamstring strain. So that without their quarterback, and their best receiver they've lost their first two at home while the seahawks have lost their first two on the road three tight end formation to get things started for clausen who has started here before back in 2010 as a member of carolina and they got to delay a game there was a flag and now some pushing back and forth between long and reuben as there was a whistle Trying and to change the play, Jim. Not a good idea here against this crowd. The of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Let's set the Seattle defense. Has not looked like the Seahawks defense we know the first two games on the road. Michael Bennett will see a lot of his brother on the other side today. Martellus, the fine tight end for the Bears. Wagner, the Seattle top tackler. And Cam Chancellor ending the 54-day holdout and gets the start. And they're in the backfield on Forte, right on the handoff. Michael Bennett disrupts and a loss of four. Not only is he a good pass rusher, he's excellent against the run. And that time he beat Jermon Bushrod inside. The crowd noise, his anticipation. He understands formation, can call out plays. Very smart, took advantage of it right there. What a way to start. A delay of game penalty and a four-yard loss. It's second and 19 as Clawson drops back to the gun. His first pass in the direction of Matt Forte. So Clawson started here when he was a member of the Panthers back in 2010. He actually took Carolina to a 14-3 halftime lead before Seattle turned it on in the second half went on the win by 17. well the key for jimmy clausen today it's patience do not take a chance play extra careful early in the game don't give the defense in the crowd any chance to get extra momentum against you top of the screen sherman on martellus bennett third and 19. and they get the short pass complete to eddie royal but nowhere close to making any difference there just a gain of three well jim when you make a mistake the delay a gain really hard to overcome against this defense this crowd and especially the chicago bears offense without their starting quarterback jay cutler tyler lockett waiting for the punt from pat o'donnell lockett who had the 57 yard punt return for the touchdown week one at st louis his first ever punt return the rookie Donald keeps his head down, pounds it in the direction, center of the field. Lockett shakes the first tackler and spins down at the 44. Let's bring out now Russell Wilson and the Seattle offense. He's only lost twice at home. That's regular and post. A remarkable 26-2 and record at home. His line includes the new starting center this year, taking over for Max Unger, who they traded to New Orleans for... 
Jimmy Graham. It's Drew Nowak at center. And Marshawn Lynch is not starting the game. As I look down on the field, it's Thomas Rawls flanking Russell Wilson, who's in the gun. And the pass complete to Jimmy Graham. They didn't waste much time getting him in the game today. A gain of nine, and of course, Tracy Wilson with us all day on the sidelines. What's the story on Lance, Tracy? Still no sign of him down here, guys. I had a chance to speak with Carroll right before kickoff, and he told me he's a little behind in terms of how he gets ready for the game. I watched him during pregame warm-ups about three hours before the game. He was out here for 30 minutes. He looked okay, not great, but Pete Carroll told me he was going to be good to go. He did say, though, see a lot of Thomas Rawls, the rookie running back. Guys. Good stuff, Tracy. He's been nursing, talking about Lynch, a calf injury, limited in practice this week. Second and one, and for the ninth time already this season, Wilson is sacked. This one belongs to Jarvis Jenkins. Loss of eight. Jarvis Jenkins, good job. And that's one of the keys to this game today. He beats J.R. Sweezy inside the right guard. It's can the Bears find a way to get pressure on Russell Wilson? One of the things why, Jim, this team is 0-2. It's not just the defense and Cam Chancellor not being there. It's protecting the quarterback. How about the first sack of the season for the Bears? Not a single one the first two games at home. Fred Jackson comes into the backfield, third and nine. And again, the wrong Wilson, who's able to flip it somehow to Jackson, short of the first. We've got an update. Let's immediately go to the other coast, to James Brown. A hard fought affair in Baltimore. Tony, take a look. Yeah, this is a great game. Joe Flacco trying to cap off a last minute comeback. He throws it deep here to Max Williams. Fourth and 17. He's not able to come up with the catch. Cincinnati goes on, wins this game 28 24. Baltimore 0 3 for the first time ever since he 3 0 on this season. Back to Jim Nance. All right, thank you guys. That game with huge ramifications. Baltimore will be playing Thursday night, will be in Pittsburgh. They take on the Steelers, and again, 0-3. Here's the punt by Ryan. And look at the Seahawks special teams cover up the punt of John Ryan as we welcome much of the audience to this one. Each team has had a possession of three and out on each occasion. And look at that coverage by Marcus Burley down the field. And sets up Clawson and the Bears inside the five. The Bears got the uh, opening kickoff. It was a touchback. They had to delay a game before they even snapped it on first down. And a quick three and out for Chicago it was. As Jimmy Clawson takes it from under center. And here's a running lane for Forte as he scrambles for every last inch and gets to uh, about a yard short of the first. So Jay Cutler, he could be back for their game next week, but he's out with the hamstring strain. Suffered while trying to make a tackle on an interception last week against Arizona. Made some big throws in the game last week. Has played well, I think, in the first two starts against Green Bay and Arizona. They'll miss his big plays in today's game. But we just saw what they want to do. The Bears pack it in there and run it right at them. Here's second and one. And the Bears pick up a first down behind Matt Forte. Back-to-back -back good runs. Jim Nance along with Phil Sims and Tracy Wolfson here in Seattle for the Seahawks home opener. Both teams coming into this game at 0-2 on the year. Chicago having lost at home to Green Bay and Arizona. Seattle road losses at St. Louis and at Green Bay. Brutal start to the season schedule-wise for Chicago. His first three opponents all in the NFC playoffs last year, including the two that were in the NFC championship game, Seattle and Green Bay. Here's a first down run. Third straight carry by Forte. How about this formation, though? They have three tight ends when you look at it. Here's one, two, and the threes in the backfield. An extra lineman. This is goal line offense, Jim, out in the middle of the field. Very rarely seen in the NFL. 
Adam Gase, John Fox. This is one way to control the game. There's Adam Gase. This is, I think, a good plan against this defense with this crowd. A timeout called by the Bears. Four of their first six offensive snaps have ended up being handoffs to Forte. And Chicago defense had a sack. His first time out on the field. It's first sack of the season. They got to Wilson. Meantime, the offense coming out of a timeout. Called by the Bears. Second and five. They were backed up to start this drive, but Forte's... Got him out past the 20, earns another carry, and he's outside. Forte has another first down, a good running early by the second all-time rusher in Chicago history. That goes for 12. Again, Jim, the heavy, they call it load. Watch the three guys, an extra offensive lineman and two tight end. And Matt Forte right now is completing every pass. And what I mean by that, he's making the right decision, where to run, and then look at that talent. How about him? All these years, all those carries, Still a glider and can still get to the edge with ease. And again, many joining us after the kickoff. Cam Chancellor starting after the long holdout. He's been out of position on a couple of these runs. The safety for Seattle. Tremendous leader for them. Another carry by Forte. This time held to about two. Eighth year for Forte. And this season averaging over five yards a clip. And is always a dangerous threat receiving the ball out of the backfield. His career against Seattle, though, Phil, he had 50 carries coming in, averaging under three yards a carry against the Seahawks. Well, that, that's probably a stat that goes to a lot of running backs to play against him. But John Fox, as he came in, saw Matt Forte and go, wow, you do not see any decline in his talent. Second and eight. And this time it's going to be Jacquez Rogers, the former Falcon. He's got three more, third and five on the way. Never miss a moment of football action with the CBS Sports app. Every play, every story, every highlight, right as they happen, download the CBS Sports app now. Let's see what they call for Clawson here on third and five. Well, that's what you want. Seven rushes, two passes. I would be very surprised if this pass goes more than five or six yards down the field. He's got three receivers in. Plus he splits out the tight end, Bennett to the near side, and a timeout by the Seattle defense. Mid first here in the Emerald City, no score. We're back in Seattle. The reason the Seahawks defense took that timeout, too many men on the field. Yep. Before that third and five play was able to run, and look who's coming out. Marshawn Lynch out of the Seattle Locker room, he did not start the game, said he needed some more time to get ready, coming off a calf injury. Bears now back to this third and five. They're going to call this, I think, against Kyle Long. False start, number 75. Off it is. That's a tough down. call because all he was doing was getting up out of his stance. He was down in his stance. No, he doesn't have, oh, he did move, so I did not see that. That was a good fake. He turned around and said, what are you saying, Jimmy? <laughs> to, to Jimmy Clausen, but he did move. Of course, he's playing a new position, having moved just before week one from right guard to right tackle. Well, that, and, and they kept him in his stance too long. Third and ten. Clausen zips it to Bennett, and he's four yards shy of a first. Wrapped up by K.J. Wright, but they managed to change field position here, Phil. Very good. Taking time off the clock, change field position. And when you're when you're a big team or a slow team, I, I think Chicago, they don't have great speed. So what do you do? They're playing offense. Let's get bigger and see if that will be good against a fast defense in the Seattle Seahawks. Donald to lock it. Look at this. Look at that fake. And there they go with Sherman inside the 30. And he is double whammied at the 20. It was the old fake out by the punt returner. 
and it was well done. Saw it in the college football game last night. Can't remember which one. Everybody's running here. Watch Richard Sherman, bottom of the screen, where the punt goes. What a job by Richard Sherman. <laughs> finding the football and making that catch. 63-yard return. At this point, you think he's got to be gone. But Lamin Barrow is able to bring him down, and Marshawn Lynch comes out of the locker room and has a chance to enjoy that moment. Well, Pete Carroll is not in the game, Marshawn Lynch, but Pete Carroll trying to give his team a spark. That's what you do. You take chances, do something the other team hasn't seen, and that was a terrific, deceptive punt return. Boy, the rookie Lockett really sold it, didn't he? As Wilson, play action, fake it on the run. Incomplete. Trying to connect with Ricardo Lockett. That's a big key. A lot of keys here today. One, for the Seattle defense, get their quarterback involved. Get him out there on those bootlegs. Let him run the football on some zone reads. That's when he's at his best. And then, of course, it's the opposite, the Bears. Keep the outside linebackers in that 3-4 defense. Don't let Russell Wilson get outside. Second and 10 from the 19 of Chicago. As Lynch remains sideline and it's Rawls, the rookie from Central Michigan. And Tracy, got any more information on Marshawn? Well, I was told he needed some extra time in the locker room to work with the trainers. He came out. They told me he was good to go, but then he went right over, and they rubbed some bomb on his back. We didn't hear about a back injury, just his calf. And right now, he remains on the sideline. He's tying his shoe, but no helmet in his end. But they did tell me he is available and good to go. Okay. Third down and four without him from the 13 with Freddie Jackson back in at running back and three receivers to the left Wilson scrambling and he is tackled good piece of tackling again by Jarvis Jenkins he's made a couple of plays no gain great job by Jarvis Jenkins he's gonna be over here 96 watch him go up the field then comes off his blocker to go back inside against J.R. Sweezy and get that tackle yeah actually since it's no gain it goes as a sack by the Bears defender. That's now two for Chicago. Just really well done. That's how you do it. Baiting to go on inside and spin off and make the tack. So Seattle, after the what is officially 64 yards on the return by Sherman, has to settle for the field goal from 31 yards. Hauschka is good. Hauschka now five for five to start the season. Today's next-gen stats are presented by eSurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world. And here you go, Phil. I know you've been clamoring for some of this kind of well, data, analytics. I like stats. And here you go. This has to do with Matt Forte. 271 scrimmage yards coming into this game. And meanwhile, during actual game action on the field, he's run a total, of course, not carrying the ball, this is just all game action, over 2,000 total yards. A lot of work, not a big deal for Matt Forte. He's in really great shape. You know, you need speed and endurance in the NFL, and he has it. There's a ball just driven through the back of the end zone. Now, he does work hard. He gets called on a lot, but that's a little more than a mile. You call that a lot of work? I got to get you out running, man. It's a <laughs> mile in two weeks. <laughs> I'll get you when we come back. <laughs> I know you will. Bears break huddle. Down 3 nothing with five minutes to go in the first. Forte back in action. And another good run. Give him four. Another formation, run up the middle, but what have we seen so far for Chicago? It's just this. Let's get big and see if we can mush the football. And they've done it so far. Got to avoid mistakes. How about that? Three tight ends, extra offensive linemen. I know you think, oh, this is not smart, but I think it's very clever what you do against Seattle. Adam Gase, who was... John Fox's offensive coordinator. That's Forte taking the direct snap. Yeah, little wildcat. 
We've got another update. So Rodgers carries it for three. Let's go back to New York, JB. Hey, Jim. Coach Coward likes the poise of Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, and I'll tell you right here, he sits back in this pocket, hits Shady McCoy for a 10-yard touchdown. He's off to a good start. Eight for 10, 138 yards in that touchdown you saw right there. Buffalo up early, 14-0. Still in the first quarter, back to Jim Nance. All right, so Miami, like Seattle, not playing at home until here, week three. And a rough start for the Dolphins. Detroit, later tonight, will be the last team with a home opener, hosting Denver. Third and four. Crossing, pressure behind him. Now takes off and ducks under. It's a one-yard game. Will not go in the books as a sack. K.J. Wright was there to tackle him. I think they were trying to go down the field to make a big play with Matt Forte, and it just it took too long. And Jimmy Clausen, smart job. Don't take a chance. Three receivers to his left, but that was not the that was a deceptive part of the play. I think they, I know they were trying to hit Matt Forte, Matt Forte, on an out and up for the big play. And O'Donnell, as the Seahawks had some pressure on him, and Lockett is smothered right away by Josh Bellamy. 45-yard punt, beautifully covered by Bellamy, who caught a touchdown last week against the Cardinals. Russell Wilson and the Seahawk offense coming back out. They've produced a field goal so far. So Marshawn Lynch comes onto the field for his first snap of the game. The number one rusher in the league since 2011. Four straight Pro Bowls, four straight thousand yard seasons every one of those seasons a minimum of 10 touchdowns here come the Seahawks who have not had a first down up to this point and look at Lynch barrel right out for about eight looked pretty good on that play right behind Russell Wilson usually you see Marshawn Lynch going across the formation when Russell Wilson is in the shotgun so this lets him Gain momentum, get more speed, use his power, running straight at the defense. Hey, Tyson! Right. Let's go! Why, Lonnie? Why? Second and two. They'll go to Lynch again. There is Seattle's first first down. Tonight on CBS, after 15 years, see how the original CSI ends. William Peterson returns tonight for the unforgettable finale after 60 minutes only CBS. Pete Carroll telling us they did MRI the calf. Lynch injured last week, but nothing showed up, and he was limited, did not practice Wednesday, was back on the practice field on Thursday. So a couple of carries, netting 13 yards, and a first down at the 39. Quick pass, dropped by Rawls. Everybody on the defensive side is back chasing wide receivers. There is nobody by Rawls, and always easy to see why the football is dropped in the league or at any level. The eyes of the receiver were looking downfield before the football arrived. You'll never find a pass that could be more on the mark than that one. Could you just sing that for me? You'll never go ahead. No, I, you were dying well, to. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I hear you singing all the time in our meetings, and it's you're, you're okay. Second and ten, and a pass right near the first down marker is Jimmy Graham, and he's still going. Good job being alert that time. Hey, everyone's been wanting to see Jimmy handle it more. They've been drawing a lot of fast conclusions after only two weeks well that's what everybody we do in the media two weeks we know what's going to happen the whole year but i don't think he hits the ground yes he did his elbow left elbow he is down john fox could challenge us to save the yards if he wants but i don't think it's worth it no he wouldn't win that one but the flag is out the challenge flag is on the far sideline oh, i think he's going to win the challenge jim but is it worth Using one of those challenges for the add, extra yards. There you go. But the Graham story, like, where is Jimmy Graham? Everybody's been, like, saying this is like a crisis situation here. 
And, you know, he caught six balls the first week, plus the touchdown. Chicago had only a catch last week. ruling on the field that the runner was not initially down by contact. So it's going to be an eight-yard difference, and that's why Coach Fox is going to challenge it. He will get those eight yards back, no doubt. And we'll step aside while they review it to make it official. It's more than just the eight yards. It depends on where they'll spot it. It could set up third and short unless they gave him progress. Well, the original mark was going to give the first down forward progress, but once they review it, they could bring it back to where the elbow hit. After review, the runner's elbow was down. He is down by contact at the 47 and a half yard line where it will be third down. Chicago is not charged with a timeout. And they mark it back at the Seattle, just outside the Seattle 47, setting up third down. Hey, your weekend starts Thursday when the Steelers will be hosting the Ravens Baltimore and Pittsburgh and uh, of course the Ravens lost again today 0-3 but the story there on the Pittsburgh side is that Ben Roethlisberger suffered what looked to be a very ugly injury to his left leg in that win today against St. Louis and Michael Vick had to go the rest of the way but we'll have Baltimore Pittsburgh Thursday night CBS and NFL Network and here's Lynch breaking the tackle and the Bears what a time to make a play they win the challenge well, I didn't have a chance, but that's the third and one is why John Fox brought it back. So I'll backtrack. That was a great challenge by him to get this situation. And it's the penetration off the edge right away by Pernell McPhee that makes this play. Gets inside, makes Marshawn Lynch change direction, and good hustle, being physical, and playing hard so far, Chicago Bears defense. Closing seconds of the quarter. The fair catch is made by Mariani back at the seventh. A 45-yard punt in the beauty. You know, Lynch got stuffed late in the game against St. Louis. And that happened here on the third and short. Yeah. Okay. And everybody gets back to that. You know, the call last year in the Super Bowl thinking, wow, a yard's wow. automatic with Marshawn Lynch. Let's just revisit visit history way back. I mean, you know, listen, the story right now for this Seahawks team, there's a lot of things going on. But we're seeing one so far here in the first quarter. The offensive line, pass protection. And in known situations, they're just not dominating in the run blocking either. Trying to get out of the pinch again behind the legs of Forte as they start another drive inside their own 10. We had only three first downs in the entire quarter. Both sides combined. And it's 3-0 Seattle after one. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Cam Chancellor is not out here on this defensive series for Seattle. Started the game. Deshaun Shedd is in at safety, number 35. As we start the second quarter, And it's Forte, and he's got the first down out to the 25, running behind Martellus Bennett. Yeah, just Martellus Bennett. Everybody thinks of him just as a receiving tight end, but he's big and athletic, and of course playing against his brother is going to fire him up. Watch 83, gets in front, keeps running, and once again, Matt Forte just timed the cut perfectly. Really tremendous blocking, aggressive blocking so far by the Bears offensive line. Forte has 50 yards rushing in this game. And here he goes again. Another nice first down carry. Pushed back by Shedd. And a couple of Seahawks, but give him another seven. We've got both minutes on the field. Martellus and Michael, there they are. They neither one. Head one. Head. Yeah, both of them said the same thing. They do not like this playing against each other are competing against each other in this situation but in their normal life they love the competition and what did uh, Michael say I beat Martellus in basically everything <laughs> yeah we didn't get yeah. Martellus yeah, side, that. side that's right but apparently Michael won in ping pong on Friday night when they had a chance to get together Michael's house second and two and that is Rogers in for Forte getting about halfway there 
Martellus and Michael both played ball at Texas A&M. And you ran into the brother James. James ran into him in the airport, and I said, hey, did you play sports? He goes, nope, I'm the smart one. I went to school and got educated, whatever. And where did he go to school? University of Houston, oh, baby. Oh, you're so proud of that. Yes, and very nice boy. About 35 Bennett family members here at this game today. Third and one for Chicago. And nice move to get past the first contact. It's Rodgers for a gain of five and a first. I'm Good. impressed the way the Bears are running the football, Phil. Oh, me too. That's, you know, this is how you attack this defense. You think it's going outside, and right here, what a cut by Jaquiz Rogers. you got to make that snap decision, knowing that it's third and short, and gets the cut back to get the yard instead of going outside and taking a chance. Forte comes back in. They've thrown only three passes so far. Two of them complete for nine yards. From the 39, Forte not this time, and busting across and making the tackle behind the line is Jordan Hill, a loss of two. Well, it's nice to have a backup like Jordan Hill. 97, here he goes. Just so quick and athletic, big. I mean, last week against the Green Bay Packers, Jordan Hill was dropping back in pass coverage, Jim, and he was the spy against Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying it worked out, but that's how what they think of him. They're putting him back in a situation like that to try to keep Aaron Rodgers in the pocket. Well, we might see a lot more of him today because Brandon Meebane has uh, suffered a groin injury in the game and is doubtful to return. Second and 12. And Crossing. On the mark with that throw. The completion to Eddie Royal, Shed knocks him down, gain of nine, back to Tracy. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. Cam Chancellor just ran out on the field. He missed most of this drive, but I was told he is completely fine. Just taking a break, Jim. Yep, I saw him take him out, Tracy, and I think you're right. They're just giving him a break, trying to pace it, because it looks like it could be a long physical game for the Seahawks defense. They want to keep him fresh. As you see, Meebane, again, doubtful to return. Suffered a groin injury in the early stages of this one. Third and three. And Clawson completes it. Bennett breaks the tackle and has the first. He got away from Burley and picks up four. Man, Martellus Bennett, number 83. Good job by Jimmy Clawson. He waits, really get, showing some good poise. And Bennett saw the tackle come in, and I just can't tell you, when you talk about this Bears football team, offense and defense, one of their franchise guys, Kyle Long at right tackle, but Martellus Bennett, big factor in the future of this team, I think. Chicago reaches midfield for the first time. Lawson's hit his last four throws. And they go back with the game plan, Forte. Pickup of two. Wednesday, don't miss the premiere of the new medical drama, Code Black. Starring Academy Award winner Marsha Gay Hart. Premiering Wednesday at 10, 9 Central, only CBS. Really good job so far, Adam Gase. Look what he's doing. The plays, the yards, but the time. And it, Jim, we talked to Jimmy Clausen last night. Really good job by him. No panic, very calm and being extremely patient with his decisions. This is the 10th play of a drive that started back inside of the 10. Second and eight. And another couple of yards, maybe three for Forte. This is, this is old school football. You know, just run it knowing you're not going to gain a lot of yards sometimes, but look what you got. Third and five. That makes it all short passes. Now we're good. Take the pressure off your offensive lineman. And there's Richard on the right, the defensive coordinator for the Seahawks. And you got the Seahawks going to try to take away the short passes now with the defense they're going to play. They've converted twice on this drive. They need five for the first. And someone called a timeout before the snap it was the Bears 
Didn't like the play they had against the defense. Good timeout. Look at top of the screen. Tom Fox. Seattle quarterback Russell Wilson. He almost run out of superlatives talking about this young man. He takes time every Tuesday to visit sick children at the Seattle Children's Hospital and has been doing so since becoming a member of the Seattle community back in 2012. He's a great man, treats everybody wonderfully. Uh, listen, not that this means anything. Even when he comes in to talk to us, uh, you never feel like he's in a rush and wanting to get away. He just He answers questions. He does what he's supposed to do, and really just a great example for everybody. Yeah, a tremendous role model. And a giver to this community. John Fox's team, two pre-snap penalties. Two timeouts. That last one, they didn't like the play. They were about to run. Yep. And he got a different defense this time. Seattle, pretty smart. Chris Richard, the defensive coordinator, said, you call timeout, I'll give you a different look. And change it up. And here comes the blitz. On third and five, Clawson just throws it out of bounds. He caught him by surprise, Chris Richard. This time, it's two linebackers that are going to blitz. Here they come, this way, and they're not ready for it. Jimmy Clawson, I, I'll tell you what, that was a good throw away. April. Take, and take the hit. <laughs> So the fourth drive of the game brings on the fourth punt. Although, again, they changed the field position. This one way up into the sky by O'Donnell. And a favorable Chicago bounce. 32 yards, that's all the travel. McManus downs it. And again, just a field goal on the board to this point. Me team, we'll review the play. So Chicago has thrown out the challenge flag. They say that ball touched the back, uh, the back foot here of one of the Seahawks players, Brock Coyle. And remember, McManus made the recovery, if you will, before he was out of bounds. Well, the Bears may pick up a big uh, turnover right here. Can you tell without question there was uh, contact with the Seahawk player? Yes, I can. I can see the football. Does he get recovery? After review, good. the ruling on the field stands. It will be Seattle's ball, first and ten. See, they don't think there was enough evidence it was contact Chicago with the... Chicago is charged with their third and final timeout, and that's their second challenge. They have no remaining challenges. Well, okay. My eyes are just not as good as I think they are. When I see that football come down... That hit his leg. Absolutely, that hit his leg. Am I right, Jim? He sure just looks the like it. Ball changed. Oh, come on. All right. Well, whoever made that decision was wrong. Or are you saying did McManus not get the cover he definitely before he got it? No. I thought he did too. I'm just saying. Definitely recovered it in bounds. I wish he'd explained one of the two, but we'll find out later. So. Instead of the Bears taking over inside the 20 at the 13, it's Rawls running it for seven. Got a flag out. McManus, 27, got the Bowling. ball. Two feet Number down. Number 68 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. Pearl Cheffers explains that one. That's the first penalty on Seattle. And, of course, you know, listen. Why did I get a little fired up there? Because that was an unbelievably big play in this game. Chicago, they want to steal the game. They want to win this thing somehow 13 to 10 or whatever. And they needed that. They need breaks, I think, to get that chance. And that was one of their big breaks that went away. First and 16. And they set up the bubble screen. And the Bears are there to defend it. Complete to curse, but picks up only three. Good job on the outside. Really, this Bears defense just doing a lot of little things well right now. And, you know, last week, they're playing the Arizona Cardinals. They're blitzing. Just an entirely different team they played. And Carson Palmer was just throwing one long pass after another, completing them, pass interference. Today, a whole different story. 
playing well so far. That was the first reception by a wideout for Seattle. Second and 13, they bring in Chris Matthews. That's Lynch. Is swarmed after a gain of two. And that now gives Seattle a total of 38 yards of offense to this point. Two big guys up front, Ego Ferguson right in there. And Pernell McPhee. I mean, Pernell McPhee, free agent pickup for the um, Chicago Bears in the offseason. Just a big outside linebacker, very good against the run, and a unique player. And he comes over as that free agent back in March he signed, leaving behind the Ravens where he was a member of the Super Bowl winning team there. Third and 11. Wilson out of the pocket. And ducks down at about the 18. They'll have to punt again. And the fact that he went head first allows Pernell McPhee just to smash him down into the ground as he goes down. Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator for the Bears, doing a fine job so far in this game. No stranger going against Seattle. Great point. He was at San Francisco. He has seen a lot of Russell Wilson and knows that, hey, keep him in the pocket. Don't let him run those zone reads and scramble to beat you. There's Lyon. And that ball only out across the 40th may have just come off the foot awkwardly gets the roll out well i saw the officials do the the sign that the ball was tipped it traveled 39 yards in the end three nothing seahawks we're back in seattle the kick, holding number 25 return team 10 yard penalty First down, Chicago. And that brings the football back to the 34 of the Bears. Wow. Ricardo Lockett, that's just a, that's what it is. When you're outside the gunner, it's just, it's a really just a fist fight. That time he got carried away and cost the Bears yardage on the penalty. Forte for another five. He's now up to 66 yards here in the first half, rushing the football. Yeah, good job on the right side. Just everybody in unison working down the line. And Kyle Long, Vladimir Dukas. Here we go. Martellus Bennett seals it. Kyle Long, oh my gosh. He is truly a special player. You said it earlier, Jim. He's told right after preseason, hey, we need your right tackle. He's gone out there and he's done a tremendous job. How many games you see like this? Five minutes to go in the half. Five first downs for Chicago. One for Seattle. I played in a lot like this. I haven't watched many. <laughs> Second and five. Quickly tossed over to Bennett. Not the Seahawks defenders are on him. Including Irvin and Chancellor coming in up high. There's Kyle Long. Look at this cast he has on his right hand. Shoulders his fingers and he says, it's not too bad. Doesn't, he goes, nobody cares. Still got to do the job. It's about technique and he handles it well. And he says, I've got my inside hand and I've got my feet. And he uses them well. Great feet for a guy that's six foot seven in his size. Third and five. Crossing. Steps up, can run for it, has the first down, and goes across the 50. Jimmy Clawson runs out for 12. Well, we got the man-to-man -man coverage because they want to stop all these short passes. So what do you do? You get up and cover them tight. Now watch nobody is going to watch Jimmy Clawson. They're just worried about getting to him. Look at all the defenders chasing receivers down the field. They were playing for short crossers inside. And when they didn't get that, that opened up the hole for Jimmy Clawson to run. They spotted at the 50. Our Mike Carey, by the way, back in New York, had a conversation with Dean Blandino, the head of officials, and Dean explained on that what we thought was a perhaps uh, turnover on the punt as Forte is met again by Hill for a loss. Blandino explaining to Mike Carey there wasn't enough video evidence that the ball was off a Seahawk player. Okay. And here it is. Mm. I, I, 
Just watch how the football is coming straight down. Oh, and then it goes dead right before it hits the ground. But, you know, listen, that's my opinion. I'm not the head of the officials, even though sometimes I think I am. <laughs> and don't laugh about that. But tough call doesn't matter. Bears in a big third down here. Second down, sorry. Second and 12. Inside of three minutes to go. And Clawson's pass. That one low because the Seahawks were in on him, including Bobby Wagner and Bruce Irvin. 54, Bobby Wagner coming up the middle. Listen, this is not quite what they do, but, man, Jim, you think you're better than the Chicago Bears, which everybody thinks they are? Three to nothing. Defensive coordinator Chris Richard going, I got a backup quarterback, a home crowd, a good defense. Let's pressure the quarterback. No timeouts for Chicago facing a third and 12. Got to get to the Seattle 40 for the first. Underneath him, incomplete. Drop by Bellamy. It would have been, in all likelihood, stopped well short of it anyway. Oh, yeah. The Cavalry was coming. They're, this defense, one of the things I love about them is they can read the quarterback and they can react when the football is thrown. A lot of guys were coming to make that tackle. Fifth punt of the game already for Pat O'Donnell. out of bounds on the far side well, he's going to move up a little bit more right at about the 20 just a 32 yard punt coming up the Verizon halftime report JB and all the guys they're looking in on this one Tony and coach have a little chat Bart and Boomer that's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Our two quarterbacks in this game combined have 48 yards passing. That's it. It's rough. I'm, I'm not surprised Chicago's having a hard time throwing the ball. They're top two receivers, not in the game, a backup quarterback. But Russell Wilson going against his defense. We've seen the Arizona Cardinals and Green Bay Packers have some big plays throwing the football. Seattle not taking advantage of that yet. Fred Jackson gets the carry out to the 28. Set up second and two. There you see Clawson, five of nine for 22. What, and four out of six for Wilson, 26. What, what did I tell Jimmy Clawson yesterday? You know, if you're 10 for 10 for 20 yards, that's going to be pretty good. And he laughed we'll and he start. goes, yeah, you're right. Number 76 offense, five-yard penalty, second down. So the left tackle, Okun, sets them back five yards. And how about Clawson's play so far? I see nothing he's done wrong, Jim. He prolonged the drive by scrambling. He's making the right decision. I have seen nothing down the field that he could take advantage of. So that was the game plan. There's Jay Cutler standing behind him. Yep, Jay if Jay Cutler was playing, it, it might have looked the same because this is how the Seahawks make you play. Two-minute warning in Seattle. Three-nothing. Steve Largent and Sean Alexander this season marking the 40th anniversary of the Seahawks and at halftime more than 30 Seahawk legends are going to be recognized. Mm -hmm. Saw them all at practice yesterday and Steve Largent, Sean Alexander, they're looking good. Dave Craig was there. Yeah, we saw we him saw too. Him. Well, we heard him too. He gave us an earful or he gave me an earful. Yes, he did. He was killing me. How was he doing? Yeah, you loved it. Here's the pass play. Open! Out across the 40 is Curse. Well, good pass protection. And what happens? Jermaine Curse going to go inside, then breaks out. You're trying to stop the big play, but that extra time just makes a defense expand, and that's why Jermaine Curse was wide open. That's the longest play from scrimmage in this game. 19 yards to Curse. There's another big play for Seattle. And it's Jimmy Graham... Work in the middle to the 36. That one's for 22. Wide open. Looks like they made a mistake. I know enough about coverages. I don't know what that one was. To leave Jimmy Graham untouched and running free has to be a mistake. And the Seahawks with two timeouts to work with. 
complete another one. Great grab that time, and out of bounds is Graham. And will there be a flag for that it toss? Was. That was Roll, who was a little too aggressive. It's a good call. You know you're out of bounds. You still take him and throw him to the ground. I think they're discussing on the sideline if... Um, But maybe some of them disagree that it was just a continuation of hitting him out of bounds. Antrell Roll, three-time Pro Bowler. This is his first year in Chicago after his stints in Arizona and the New York Giants. There's no foul for unnecessary roughness. The player was contacted inbounds and released out of bounds. Well, there you go. I'm hot today. Everything I'm saying is wrong. Contact right there inbounds. Well, he did let him go. When you see it the second time, okay. It was a pickup of four on the play, second and six. Going to play a little tighter defense here this time by the Bears. Cut. In the ground. Red Jackson. Boy, he kept going, too. We've got a Chicago Bear down on the field. It's Will Sutton. Will Sutton, big presence inside. He's played well here in his first half today. 93. Oh, he reached in there. Oh, looks like his hand. He grabs his hand. I like some of these in, inside players. Will Sutton, Eddie Goldman, 91, Eagle Ferguson. Well, Jarvis Jenkins has made some plays today. Yeah, they're without Willie Young today. He's been coming off an Achilles injury. This will be an excess timeout for Chicago. Please set the play clock to 40 seconds. The game clock will start on my signal. Jay Ratliff will be coming back from suspension. That's a big deal. Next week. Pass rusher, inside player. You can never have enough guys that can rush the quarterback. Jackson, by the way, was stopped about a yard short of the first. Five-yard carry. So it'll be third and one with a minute 17 remaining in the second quarter. Coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. James Brown and all the crew. All the latest scores and highlights. And a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. A lot of crazy fourth quarters today, wasn't it? The, the Cowboy game turned around. Teams trying to make comebacks. The Ravens and the Bengals. That was some finish. Julio Jones is off to just a crazy start as the Falcons are now 3-0. You know what they're doing? Of course, his talent is, we all know how good he is, but you got to give Dan Quinn, the head coach, Kyle Shanahan, the offensive coordinator, they are giving him many, many chances. He was targeted, I don't know what he was today, last week 15 times, had 13 catches. Third and one. And it's Lynch. Well, he's squirming for it, but I don't, the far side looks like, well, near side as well. Going to mark him short of the first as Jarvis Jenkins was the first to get there. Pete Carroll's going to go for it. He's definitely short. He's going to go for it, but he's also letting the clock run. Well, that's, that's okay. They got a couple timeouts. So if he doesn't get it, it hampers the Chicago offense. They toss it right over the top, and Lynch able to secure it. Bobbled it for a moment. Interesting formation he had. Baldwin lined up behind him. Lynch is the fullback, and they just put it up there gently for a gain of nine. There's the catch at last. They do really run some very clever unique situation plays and that was one shift Marshawn Lynch up the line of scrimmage nobody from Chicago thinks about him as a pass receiver they leave him uncovered look at this defense 
everybody back deep with 20 seconds to go except for three down linemen. So underneath they go to Kirsch. And the Bears let him get all the way to the three-yard line. Timeout call. I didn't get it. Two timeouts. Why are you doing that? Give them all those yards. I'm kidding. Seattle has two timeouts. Why is everybody back here playing this defense? It's like you thought, oh, Seattle has no timeouts. Let's just tackle them in bounds, and that'll do it for us. All they can do is kick a field goal. Now they're going to get two, maybe three shots with 13 seconds to score. And one timeout still to play with as Wilson. Pressure from behind to the end zone and out of bounds. That play brings the clock down to nine. McPhee was in the area of the quarterback, forced him to throw it away. Good job by Seattle on this drive, just marching down. But also, you look at it from the Bears defense or team, their side. They've done so many things well here in a really adverse situation. Give up a touchdown in this situation is going to be, man, it's going to be demoralizing going into halftime. Yeah, Graham one-on-one -on -one at the bottom. They're looking that way, and it is knocked down by Allen Ball. Nice job by Allen Ball. He has to know. Graham on the outside, six foot seven. Oh, what a job, too. Did you see him, Jim? Allen Ball immediately got in position, saw the quarterback, so he saw the fade, whatever you want to call it, the jump ball. Interesting. Here you see Carroll's reaction. He thought that would go, that he would like that matchup one on one for Graham, but Ball makes a stellar play. They're going to run another snap here with five seconds and one timeout. Well, we saw the Super Bowl, how he gambled right before half. Here's the pass to the end zone, incomplete. Again, he was going for the size advantage. The 6'5", Chris Matthews, Allen Ball again stands firm. Boy, really good job by Allen Ball. Just being aggressive, and Russell Wilson has no choice because of time. John Fox knows how big this stop was, but with five seconds, Russell Wilson had to throw it quick and hard just in case it was incomplete. So Hauschka had made a 31-yard field goal in the first quarter. This from 21 to close the first half. And that kick is good. Seattle drives 77 yards in two and a half minutes. Pair of Hauschka field goals. And the Seahawks pair of Hauschka field goals and the Seahawks will receive the second half kickoff after deferring at the top. 6-0 Seahawks back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. 6-0 Seattle on a pair of field goals over the Bears as we get ready for the start of the third quarter and let's take a look at the Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam. Russell Wilson over to Marshawn Lynch on a fourth down play that set up the field goal on the last play of the half of quite a defensive stand by the Bears to keep him out of the end zone. And again, as we mentioned, the 40th anniversary of this franchise, and a lot of the legends being recognized here at halftime. But what a part of the community this Seahawks organization is. The 12s everywhere you go. There is so much pride around here, rightfully so. Great back-to-back -back, uh, NFC championships. Of course, the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. But this it's a this great, city is really into their team. It's a, it, it can put to shame the college atmosphere. It's just over the top. It's awesome, and it must be great to be a player here to, to feel all this about the, how the fans feel about the team. Let's talk about the second half here as the Bears have been able to hang in there. Well, let me just say this about the Bears. I like what they did. Dave Craig accused me, you know, as you were laughing the other day about, hey, I don't talk enough about defense. That was an exciting first half. In my eyes, it's six to nothing. But the Chicago Bears on offense have to quit making those little penalties, and they got to pick up the blitz. For the Seattle Seahawks, I'll just say it this simple. Put Russell Wilson in the shotgun and trust him. You're the better team. Give yourself more chances to win the game by letting him decide what to do with the football. Through the first two weeks, the Bears had allowed an NFL high 11 total touchdowns, but none so far today.
and see, though, what happens with this first possession of the second half as the Bears, the first two games, have seen the opponent take it down the field and drive it for a touchdown in the opening two weeks. And here's Lockett, the rookie from Kansas State, down the sidelines and unstoppable. 105 yards. Beautiful job, beautiful. Watch how he takes the football in the end zone. He measures it, Jim, when it's in the air. This is a Bears kickoff coverage team that gave up a kick return on the opening kickoff last week against Arizona. And Lockett, just before taking the field, got some sort of big pep talk. We saw it with Pete Carroll and the rookie has now returned a punt and a kick for touchdowns in just the third game of the season. Special teams, the number one priority coming to this game. Do not give Lockett a chance. And the extra point by Hauschka is good. Well done by John Ryan on the hold. And really, there was nobody to beat. He just outran him. He's not touched. Look how he catches the football at full speed. That's how they teach you. Get momentum. If the ball was kicked low, which it was, they want you to bring it out of the end zone. If it's kicked high, then stay in. The blocking was good, but the Bears got out of their lane and made it easy. Hey, this kid had a couple of return touchdowns in the preseason. I saw him. I Here he is, 103 yards against the Broncos, August the 14th. And you saw this one against San Diego, August the 29th, a punt return. And here it is, week one against St. Louis, his first ever return, punt return. Pete Carroll saying this kid, he's uh, a competitor, he's poised, just a fantastic player. We want to get him the ball. Well, he likes his energy, his talent, it's unique. They love that here in Seattle, 105, longest in team history. And also, they know he's tough. He played those years at Kansas State with Bill Snyder. You know, Bill Snyder's not like a walk in the park. You no, know? he's so a great coach. He's a tough coach who really teaches his guys. And when his guys come in the NFL, they're ready to, to adapt and play well. Well, he had a couple of hundred catches. A couple of hundred at Kansas State was drafted in the third round. Well, what a way to break your spirit. You put up such a good first half. Only giving up a couple of field goals, and then you kick it 12 seconds into the third quarter. They break it for the touchdown. Let's go down to Tracy. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. When the Seahawks finally take the field on offense, they will not have running back Marshawn Lynch. It is not his calf. It is not his back. It is his right hamstring, and I was just told he is out for the game. Wow. Thank you, Tracy. And he had again been battling the calf coming in. You know, Jim... Running backs, any player in the league, it's if it's the toe, it turns into the calf, to the hamstring on, and it's probably would have been best to sit him out this game and rest him, but they thought he was ready. Play action fake to Forte, it crossed him down the field for the first time, throwing the pass at that length, and he's got his target. It's complete to Zach Miller for 21. Good play action fake, good timing. They've been running the football so many times on first down, and Jimmy Clausen had all day to throw it, and a beautiful throw on target. Longest play of the game for Chicago. I think that's the first pass they've actually thrown close to 10 yards down the field. Of course, that was farther. Matt Forte, he rushed it for 64 yards in that first half. Picks up two on his first carry of the second half. The first half stats. Seattle led 6-0 at the intermission, even 0 for 6 on third down. But the Seahawks score on the last play of the first half and the first play of the second half. Second and eight. As Carson is in trouble and throws it out of bounds and over the outstretched reach of Bruce Irvin. Well, the pass protection was good. He had time. He wants to throw the football to Matt Forte. 
out in the flat or down the field. Nothing's there. Bruce Irvin, pass rusher, speedy, all over. Third and eight. Here they come, and they've got to him this time. The sack by Wagner. Well, they got the formula now. They feel it. Every time they blitz, what they have done, here comes Bobby Wagner to the outside. They've gotten to the quarterback or made him throw it away, Jim. So when that happens, next time you get the football, expect it again. And guess who's back to return the punt? Tyler Lockett. And guess who should kick this football near or out of bounds? Yeah. Pat O'Donnell. You got it. See, you could coach. Yeah. yeah. Good study. You are. But it's uh, in the middle of the field and a fair catch. Bobbled for a moment. You ready for this? Fox and Carroll went against each other in Super Bowl 48. Right. And the second half kickoff was returned for a touchdown by Percy Harvin against Coach Fox's team on that occasion. Well, I like working with you. You know everything. Let's take a look at Next Gen Stats presented by Esurance. Give you a little uh, analytics on oh, Tyler Lockett. Yeah, here he busting goes. Busting at 105 yards maximum speed. Got up to 21. Pretty good stuff. Here's Wilson. On first down, connecting with Ricardo Lockett for a gain of about 19. Excellent play action fake. Russell Wilson, big hands, can extend the football and sell it. And even if he doesn't sell you, he's got the speed and the, the motion to get around you. And I, I listen, Pete Carroll's been to two Super Bowls back to back. But this offensive line is not the same one he's had the last two years. They've got to let Russell Wilson do more with the football in his hands. He's cautious. He's safe. A little bit like Aaron Rodgers in that respect. He's going to do you right. He's in trouble here, and he's dragged down. And that's McPhee, who is going to get the sack. Well, and a loss of 11. Yeah, Jim, it's... Comes to this side, but you've got a tight end. Jimmy Graham blocking a big, solid pass rusher. When you do that with your tight end, it's going to be tough. And Pernell McPhee, heard that name quite a few times today. Another good play by him. That's the third sack for the afternoon by Chicago. Seattle, you see today, they had that big uh, little... Deception move, the punt return by Richard Sherman set up a field goal, then the kick return. They have six first downs and 13 points. As Wilson gets hit from behind, and again, it's McVee. Sacks on back-to-back -back plays. Beautiful job by McVee. He kept working, but the coverage down the field was good. So the pass rushers got a second chance. Oh, my gosh. And Gilliam just completely misses Let's watch down the field. Russell Wilson wants to throw it. Nothing is open. Man, really good coverage. Can't even throw it short. And when he tries to make that second move, lots of people there to make the play. Brings up third and 25. Pass is caught by Curse. And he shoved out of bounds at the 35. He had Jared Allen applying some pressure on that throw. Well, you know, listen, this is this is some recurring theme. 69 pushes, gets inside, and also McPhee back there again. He was going for the hat trick. But, you know, 13 to nothing. And you and I talked last night. One of the stories we wanted to follow, this Seattle offensive line. It's been the cornerstone of this football team. And right now it's not. Big pressure up the middle, but able to get away with it. Ryan. And it bounces out of bounds near the 30. Acho almost got there. Come flying through. Okay, the Bears. Second possession of the second half. A total of 
123 yards of offense to this point. Clawson, 6 out of 11 for 43 yards. Forte, stuffed. Maybe a yard. No, we'll give him no gain. And a Holding flag. Number 62 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Called on Vladimir Dukas. Meanwhile, tonight, Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump have something in common. You think I just did the natural segue off of I, that? I, 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 it's it's I, unbelievable. I don't call for these. <laughs> that was Lamps. They'll each answer some tough questions tonight on the season premiere of 60 Minutes, only CBS. Well, they have not overcome any adversity. The Chicago Bears offense, a 10-yard penalty, very difficult the way the game has gone to think that even in three downs, they could get 20 yards. And another flag out. Might be a delay game. game. Yep. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, watch, watch what they're doing, Jim. Matt Slauson, the left guard, is touching the center, Will Montgomery. And the process is, I've been watching it all day, it's a little too slow, and they're just beating the clock so many times. You can see Jimmy Clawson, he's back there clapping his hands about eight times, like, hurry up, give me the football. That's the third pre-snap penalty on the Chicago offense. And here they're battling again. That's knocked down. April got a hand on it. Well, we've had some blitzes. Look at it, and they have not reacted well to Chicago Bears offense. You make Jimmy Clausen move. Pass protection breaks down. Little great inside linebacker blitz again. Oh, man. The pocket collapses. These two linebackers, Bobby Wagner, K.J. Wright, they got it all. Big, fast cover. Second and 25, and here's the longest pass of the game by either side, and it's just out of reach for Josh Bellamy, who caught his first NFL pass last week for 48 yards and a score. And again, the Chicago offense, not only without Jay Cutler, but all Sean Jeffrey, who did not make the trips, watching back in Chicago, and he's such a big part yeah. of what they have on the outside normally. Well, it's tough. When you got all your receivers, it's hard against this defense. I've watched a lot of Seattle Seahawks games. I can't remember the last time I saw buddy, somebody run deep and catch a football against these corners. They do not give up long passes. It's third and 25. And the draw, Forte, for only one. As the Bears bring out the punting unit, we hear that German Bushrod is being looked at, going through the concussion protocol, possible concussion. And we saw an injury earlier by Will Sutton, suffered by Will Sutton and the defensive lineman. Possible bicep injury, questionable to return. Seven drives now, seven punts. This one drives back, lock it to the 25 and a good tackle. He's tackled by Jacquez Rogers. The flag is out after that 61-yard punt. And the flag came in just after the tackle. Carl Cheffers. During the kick. Holding, receiving team, 10-yard penalty, first down, timeout. 13-0 Seahawks, second half opening up with that electrifying 105-yard kick return for a touchdown. Here's what the Seattle offense has produced so far. The Chicago defense having a fine effort, four sacks, holding them to 146 yards. The one drive right before the half, they covered 77 yards. And again, going the rest of the way without Marshawn Lynch. Aggravating a hamstring and breaking it is Walls. And the rookie lowers his head and is tackled at the 36. Gain of 21. Yeah, Rawls had a good preseason. 
Here it comes down in the inside. You can see the guys just chase Jared Allen. Somebody's got to stay outside. They did not. And when you're a rookie running back, you fight for every extra yard. That's a good job by Rawls doing that. But, you know, it's, it's something the defense is playing well. They're stopping the run. But if you get too aggressive over pursue, you give up a big run there. And he's written down by McPhee, who's very active out there. Replay every game of the 2015 season on demand with NFL Game Pass. Go to NFL.com slash Game Pass to start your free trial. Well, McPhee, we talked about him earlier just because he is, even John Fox, he didn't even know how to describe him yesterday. We talked to him, he goes, yeah, he's, um, he's really interesting because... What do you say? He's big. He could be almost a defensive lineman, but athletic enough to be a linebacker. Second and eight. Slipping out of a tackle. It's Walls. Picks up five. It'll be third and three. What have you seen out of Jimmy Graham blocking? He's caught four balls today for 44. That was always going to be the case. Everybody wanted to talk about it. The blocking. Oh, he lowers his head. It just misses McPhee on a run block. So that was not good. But then this... I don't blame him here. I mean, Jimmy Graham, how many times did he stay in and block for Drew Brees? I uh, probably could count him on one hand, so it's going to take a while before he's a good pass protector. Seattle 0 for 7 on third down in this game. Three-man line usually means blitz. Wilson gets it away, and it is on target. The first catch of the game for Doug Baldwin. And a gain of 22. Beautiful job, but when I watch this team, every time they had three down linemen, the Chicago Bears, it means some type of unique blitz. They brought a corner. Oh, a Doug Baldwin, what a nice out and up. There is no way Antrell Rose is specking that. He goes, man, we're blitzing. Russell Wilson's going to have to throw it quick. That was not the case. Good pickup, and they get the big play. And they finally convert. For the first time today, from the Chicago 35, it's Rawls. And he's tackled down at the 31, picks up four. As Derek Coleman mixes it, mixes it up for a moment with Christian Jones. You know, you got Lynch. The next game for Seattle will be against Detroit here next week, but he had the calf injury. Now he has the hamstring today, which you say is all tied to it together. They're going to get a good look, it looks like, in this very game here, of what Rawls can do. This team is built around the premise that they can be tough and run the football. So you got to make Marshawn Lynch, he's still the guy, you got to make sure he's 100% to fulfill that role. Led the league in rushing last year, Seattle did. Leading it here, 13-0 timeout, Seattle. We are back on just a spectacular day here in Seattle. What a shot. The stadium, so beautiful. Second and six. Seahawks are driving. Rawls, he was able to get away from Acho and fight for a yard before Allen Ball. Yeah, but Sam Macho, they brought him in there that time. Good job of staying outside and pushing the run outside so there was not a big gain and the running back couldn't get around the corner. It'll bring up a third and five. Rawls has 33 yards on this drive, but Jackson replaces him for this snap. The longtime member of the Buffalo Bills. And Wilson, pocket seal, open is Graham, slips out of the tackle, and he's in the end zone for the touchdown. What a great effort by Jimmy Graham. Got away from Brock Vereen. He takes it 30 yards for the touchdown. Such a tough matchup. Russell Wilson stays in the pocket. Nice job of going to the first guy crossing, then finding Jimmy Graham. And you see it's almost impossible to match up against him because he's tall, fast, big, he's got it all. Maybe not the greatest blocker in the NFL, but does it matter when you can catch it 
and make plays like that. Well, two big third down conversions on that drive, converting for the first time today. The second one going for the touchdown. We met with Russell Wilson. He said when they first made the trade, he talked a lot, texted a lot with Graham, and Graham said, hey, let me make it very clear. I don't care about my catches. I care about one thing. I want to win. Well, today's Next Gen stats are presented by eSurance, auto and home insurance for the modern world. Two touchdowns here in the third quarter. The first on the kick return to open up the second half by Lockett. And then Wilson to Graham, covering 30 yards. And it's 20 to nothing, Seattle. Russell Wilson just hung in there. Finally, some opportunities came to him to make some plays, and he made them. Mariani. And he tumbles out to about the 22. Now, what do you think if you're the Bears? Now, they've been playing very conservatively all day. What do you do now down 20 to nothing? 4.22 to go in the third quarter. I don't know if I change a lot. You know, to think that you're just going to now open it up and start trying to make plays, then this game will be 40 to nothing before you look up. So stay with it. A lot of time to go. After the play was over, unnecessary roughness. Number 83 of the kicking team. 15 yards will be added to the end of the play. First down. And that's what happens to everybody when they come here, Jim. They make the mistakes. The penalties, which we saw, which stopped some Bears drives, and then special teams. Uh, listen, they got it all here. They, re they drafted Tyler Lockett just for that reason. Now, the fact that he's turned into a good receiver, that's a plus, but they're always looking for those unique players. They got lots of them. One of them's a quarterback, and one's a tight end and just caught that touchdown. Best starting point of the day for the Bears. And they take it across the 40 with Forte. Well, kind of interesting on the touchdown catch. They're going to drop back. It's just going to be a three-man rush. They're going to drop back and spy Russell Wilson. They're thinking, we'll get some pressure. He'll break the pocket. We'll make the play. But protection was too good. They didn't make him move. And Jimmy Graham wide open. And a yard short of the first. Again, Cam Chancellor coming back after the long holdout. He was back home in Norfolk, Virginia, working out with a guy who's trained him, Kevin Allen, since he was in high school, watching all the games on television. But the minute he returned, the Seahawks would tell you the energy in the building changed right away. Hey, he's the team captain. He's a physically very gifted player, and he's smart. He can read offenses and help his players out. Third and one, and Forte is stopped short. I think you got to go for it here. It's fourth and one. And John Fox is not. He's going to play the game out. Still plenty of time to go. you got to think the way it's gone that you have a chance to maybe get three or four possessions. And John Fox is walking out in the field to get a good look at this. Mm. Forte was... Uh, they. Were able to bend him back as he was trying to overpower them and fight off a couple of defenders for the first. So they're going to bypass the chances fourth and just inside of the yard. Now you might get three more possessions, but I don't know how many times you'll be able to get the ball somewhere close to midfield. But they're going to punt it here for the eighth time. Jim, I agree with the decision. I think I would punt it here and just go ahead and wait and see if your defense can make a play. If you go for it and don't make it, then the game is definitely, well, not definitely, but probably over. Donald. Seahawks were wary of a possible fake, but the punt caught at the 11-yard line. 43 yards it traveled. On our way to Super Bowl 50, looking back at the matchup between Coach Carroll and Coach Fox, Super Bowl 48. The Legion of Boom dominated from the start, the safety on the first play from scrimmage, and 
the Seahawks never looked back. Had that second half begin with the kick return for the touchdown in that one by Percy Harvin. Cruising to their first Super Bowl title. And that man in the middle right there is a legend. He refereed three of them. The great Jim Tunney. He flanked there to our left by Garth DeFelice, longtime official. And he did one Super Bowl, back Super Bowl 40, and Joe Ryan from the NFL. But Jim Tunney. He's here as an observer for the officials. First and ten. As Rawls is tackled by McClellan. Saturday is the best game for the best conference. With Bama takes on Georgia. The SEC on CBS begins with inside college football and college football today. Alabama, Georgia next Saturday on CBS. Looking forward to that. That will be exciting. Georgia, the offense, what they're doing. Hey, don't forget the offensive coordinators, uh, Ryan Schottenheimer. Left the St. Louis Rams, went down there, is coordinating that offense. Done a great job so far. There's a second and six carry, and a good burst ahead as Rawls slips out of an ankle tackle. And he's up to the 32-yard line. Thomas Rawls, his confidence is gaining here in the second half that goes for 18. yeah it's gaining his right nice job inside that was the center drew nowak who gets the block jr sweezy pulls around from the right guard position i think we're starting to see a defense that's getting tired the seahawks have performed this act many times grinding out the finish of a game 54 yards in the quarter for Wolves. play action fake to him and wilson's pass Hits Curse to the Chicago side of the field at the 46. Beautiful. Everybody up trying to stop the run. Jermaine Curse coming across the field. Nice sell. Pushes off. Or not pushes off. Just makes that cut. And I've said it before. Look at Russell Wilson. Really an excellent play action quarterback, like I said. And I think, you know, yesterday when we met him, Jim, we were talking... He grabs her hand, you know, you can see why he can control the football. That pass for 22, he says all five passes in this quarter, and now he's going to run for first down yardage. Sliding down at about the 33. This is what you like to see. They ran the ball, they threw it down the field on play action, trying to really go for another big play, but, well, you see that a lot. Russell Wilson, nothing there. He'll make it happen. That's the end of three with the score. Seattle 20, Chicago nothing. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 50. Forte was hurt on that third down attempt. You'll see they bend him back. Right about here. Oh, yes. And that's rough. Mm. Back to the Seahawks now as we start the fourth quarter. Mike Arnold on Sparrow presiding over the crew as Walls has another six yards. So in the absence of Marshawn Lynch, this undrafted rookie out of Central Michigan now has nine carries for 66 yards. Yeah, he's healthy. He's eager. Doing a good job reading the blocks. Hasn't been too fast. And like I said, I think he caught, even Pete Carroll was saying, a uh, little faith. They have faith in him. And he had a productive, solid preseason for this Seattle Seahawks team. Second and four. Now the pocket collapses and the pass is tossed out of bounds. Well, they made some changes at running back because they like this kid. They were able to jettison a couple of guys who had been here for a long time, Turbin and Michael. Yeah, you know, there's many reasons why they do that. Just team chemistry, uh, getting Fred Jackson. That's Listen, that was a nice pickup, a smart player. Pete Carroll said he came in here and picked up the offense right away. So when you put him in there, any situation, you know he's not going to make that big mistake to hurt your football team. And he's in there now. Yes, he is, yep. Yeah. 
Coach Carroll saying he totally gets it. Learned the offense in like a couple of days. He was a four-time Buffalo Bills captain. Wilson was looking his way now. He's in trouble. And for the second straight play, just has to unload it. That was Tracy Porter blitzing from the secondary. The Chicago Bears defense, Tracy Porter off the inside receiver. Has the speed to keep Russell Wilson from getting outside. Vic Fangio, the defensive coordinator, when he was with the Indianapolis Colts years ago, he could blitz with the best of them. And this defense, which has had a hard time getting the quarter to the quarterback, is not afraid to blitz you to do it. So Hausch get back out for the third time. The field goal business from 45 yards. True again. Three for three. A minute into the final quarter. Seahawks flanking the Bears. Welcome back to Seattle. 23-0 the score. Well, Jimmy Graham is flying high since scoring that touchdown earlier in the game, but he's also flying high in the Seattle skies. He is a certified pilot, and since coming to the Seahawks, he got his seaplane license as well. Graham told me he's currently building his own plane that he plans on flying to and from training camp every day next year. And guys, he also told me traffic during getting to and from the the facility could be up to an hour by car, by flight. Guess what? Just five minutes. Definitely efficient. I hope he's not flying like that to camp. <laughs> that's, that's something. That, Tracy, my partner up here got a little air sick looking oh, at that clip. Man, did I ever. That's not lying. When he turned upside down, I quit looking. And he'll, he'll understand when I, he'll be the same way when he's my age after playing in the NFL for a long time. But how things have changed, right, Jim? Go to practice and play. Impressive. Again, no chance at a return. Your weekend starts with Thursday night football when the Steelers will host the Ravens. They met three times last year, including the playoffs. Baltimore will be desperate. Pittsburgh, well, it's going to be, no doubt, the Steelers without Ben Roethlisberger. They're going to MRI him. He got hurt today, and the early reports are they're hoping he might be talking about an injury to his left knee that could cost him only about four games, but that's just an early. Yeah, and then, you know, prognosis. listen, you talk about the Steelers, everybody thought that this was an offense that could set records this year because of the quarterback and, and all the talent they have outside. Michael Vick came in in relief of an injured Roethlisberger today as they eked out a win at St. Louis. Cortez back in. Clawson's going long for Bennett. It was a good pass, but well defended. Sherman was back there, but so too was Earl Thomas. Well, one of the best erasers in the NFL, that's Earl Thomas. As I always say, and you hear me talk about it, he can take a 20-yard play and turn it into five. That's what makes him unique. Probably still the fastest safety back there in the league it's one of the reasons why Pete Carroll drafted him in the first round they had a 21 yard completion on the first play of the third quarter but only three yards make it five yards now in 11 plays since as Forte has a couple Kyle Long jumping up out of that pile little ginger ginger Lee I should say So again, I mentioned earlier, Bushrod was being examined for possible concussion, and that has been confirmed. He will not be returning. Their left tackle. They move in Charles Leno to that position. It's third and eight. Austin's pass caught, and Bennett got up before he was touched. This is going to go. All the way out to the 49. Very alertly. Very good, but I must I bet you Pete Carroll wants to see a replay to see if he's touched as he goes to the ground. Well, did he get up? Was that left knee up before right touched him? Oh, he's down. Yeah, I think you're right. No question about it. Here comes the flag. 
panel is challenging the ruling on the field that the runner was not down prior to where we spotted the ball. We'll review the play. And remember, if that's going to be the case, overrule, they'd be facing fourth down. Down by contact at the 28-yard line. It'll be fourth down. Seattle will not be charged with a timeout. Seahawks win the challenge. Wright did, in fact, touch Bennett, but he still had a knee down. Yep. Elbows down, knees down, everything. So good call. Good job by K.J. Wright. Being alert, knowing he has to touch the receiver down. Biggest kick of the afternoon. Bounces at about the 10 and into the end zone. 72, net of 52. Well, I think if there's anything to think about when you're looking at how to run this game, if you're thinking maybe Chicago should have gone for it there, I'll just say this. You were wrong. Okay. You punt the ball. You're backed up, fourth down. Every situation's been very tough. You've had a rough day on third downs. You punt it and just play the game out. So you just want to see what happens by playing it out. You're in a tough situation. You need the football at least three times in two-point conversion. So no decision for John Fox. That's Rawls. Look at Rawls recklessly running out to the 37. That's a pickup of 17. He's now 10 carries for 83 yards. Defense is tired. You know that you're in a tough situation. It just, it, it does it. It gets emotionally really tough in situations like this for a defensive team that played so hard. Known in the direction of Cooper Helfand. Tonight, week three continues Sunday night football. The Broncos will be taking on the Lions. Kansas City is at Green Bay on ESPN tomorrow. Then week four kicks off Thursday night football on CBS and NFL Network. We'll be in the Steel City for the Ravens and Pittsburgh. You know how you keep the energy up on a defensive side in a situation like this? Just what they did. Vic Fangio said, okay. We got no life, no one. He blitzed. That way it just gets guys moving around, and hopefully you make a big play. Second and ten. Wilson. Going on quickly. He gets past Achu. Really Achu. good job. Could have got him for a loss, but it's a gain of four. Sorry, Jim. It, he did the right thing. Sam Acho stayed outside. Made Russell Wilson go inside, so he kept the gain to a minimum. If you let him fake you, remember what Jared Allen said? If he fakes you out and goes outside, now it's down the sideline for big yards. Wilson today, three carries for 22 yards. Thrown for another 205. And a touchdown. Seahawks have not turned the football over. Facing third and six. Open man, first down. That's Doug Baldwin. Good job. Little blitz on the inside. Both linebackers attack the quarterback, but look at the coverage. They're trying to disguise it. That's why they're so far off, trying to fool Russell Wilson. Well, in year four, all the snaps he's got, he has seen it all. This is really, it's got to be a big confidence boost to this Seattle offense. Just getting these plays, playing at their pace. They give it to Rawls. And another yard for him. They had brought in a fullback to lead the way to Kuafu. But you know, Jim, coming in the game, I always like we talk about, oh, here's some keys that I want to cover. Uh, Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator. But to me, when you look at this offense, everybody, oh, Jimmy Graham and Marshawn Lynch. I've never known skill guys to play great when the offensive line is not dominating. 
and that's what they got to keep this unit together. They got to keep working, and they got to continue to get better. Second and nine, and that's Graham wrapped up right away by Jones. Sixth catch for Graham. So again, Marshawn Lynch went out. Right at the end of the first half, five carries, 14 yards. What have you seen, though, out of the offensive line? They have allowed four sacks in the game, but in the second half, things are starting to get going for them, it looks like. They got it going, and they got some rhythm. And you know what? Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, needs this, too, to, to be able to call a game with some, hey, where I'm in control, where they're not always fighting from behind or worrying about pass protection and all the other things that can go wrong. Third and six. Open is Curse. And what a fine tackle by Sherrick McManus. Boy, they gave him a pretty generous spot there. Looks like it might be right on the mark. Looks like it could be, well, I'm going to say it's just a little short. And I think Pete Carroll's going to go for it. Nice job by Curse. Going to help the pass protection. Bring the chains from the far side. Inches shy. Yeah, the, yeah, the crowd's kind of saying, okay, Pete, I think he will go for it. Well, he He's going to visualize it for a moment. Yeah, that's not how he is. He's thinking, well, if I could, I could do it. He's funny. I always watch Pete Carroll warming up. They got the offense still in there. He loves to go down and throw the football before the game and catch it. Made a great catch from Aaron Rodgers last week. He threw one away, and Pete Carroll yeah, right at him. He reached up and snagged it. Right there on the sideline. But he has some boundless energy, doesn't he? He does. It, and that's why this team plays the way it does. They can play 60 minutes hard because the coach teaches them to play that way. Fourth and inches. Wilson in trouble. Somehow got away with it and completes it for the first down to Jimmy Graham. Jarvis Jenkins had him. He might not be the tallest quarterback in the NFL, but one thing about Russell Wilson, they're not fooled. Really good job by Jarvis Jenkins. He stays outside, but he's strong. He's sturdy. And he got low. I mean, how many times do you think Jarvis Jenkins has had to go down that low to try to tackle a quarterback? Well, probably none. Twice. The Seahawks have gone for it on fourth down today, and both times Russell Wilson has completed passes for the first. Back to Rawls with a helmet climb. You know, when you look at the Seahawks offense, it, you would say, okay, by NFL standards, it can be conservative. But they make up for it by doing things like that. They're not afraid to take chances on fourth down. They're looking for different ways to, to catch you off guard. This is the way this team is constructed. When we were talking about Jim in the pregame show, Jimmy Graham's got to get, we're not going to just line up Jimmy Graham and throw him the football 15 times a game. That's not who they are. But when they need him, if they have to call upon him, I think he can get it done. Second and six. Wilson goes deep to the end zone, and it's incomplete. Man, what a throw. That was going in the direction of Tyler Lockett. And at the last minute, it bounced off his chest and well, Fuller recovered. You can see the initial route, the double move. He was wide open. Russell Wilson gets flushed out of the pocket. Good recovery by Fuller. But that was some throw. That was 50 yards on the run to the back of the end zone. 11th play of this drive coming up on third and six. And a stoppage and a five-yard mark, mark off coming against Seattle. Ball start, number 68 offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Justin Britt, the left guard. 
Well, there are a lot of people wondering as the Seahawks came home 0-2, was this team going to get back on track? You know, it doesn't take long before all these questions start swirling. Are they still a premier team? What are they going to be yes. like? They're giving up points. <laughs> you know, Russell's getting sacked a lot of times. Listen, they lost in Green Bay by the talent and magic of Aaron Rodgers and nothing else. That's Wilson to the 30. And St. Louis has never been an easy trip for them anyway. St. Louis, that's their Super Bowl when they have Seattle come to town. So those are tough. But I kid you not, I watched that Green Bay game live, and I watched it again, just kind of getting ready for this, Jim. And it was truly one of the best quarterbacking performances I've seen in the NFL. And Pete Carroll brought it up to us. He goes, it was phenomenal. He admired what Aaron Rodgers did against his football team. 48-yard field goal attempt by Hauschka. Steven Hauschka, for the fourth time today, drills it right through. He was four for four on the season coming in. Now eight out of eight. 26 nothing Seahawks. Six minutes to go. Well, Hauschka will put it on a tee, and the Seattle defense will try to close this one with a shutout for the first time for the franchise since back in 2013. It's such a big source of pride for any defense, but particular, in particular, the Legion of Boom. And they're back together, of course, with Camp Chancellor's return. That'll be some fitting return with it. Meanwhile, the Bears have gone 194 straight games without being shut out. The longest streak in team history. We'll be right back to Seattle. Ah, uh, yes. Pike Place Market and the Flying Salmon. What an attraction here. Six minutes to go. We've not had a turnover committed in this game by either side, but... It's a 26-0 shutout. And Clawson is stepping up and running out for a yard. The Bear, if you will, possession chart. They all end the same way. Punt. Five, three and outs. You, you were talking shutouts. The shutout, what's it mean to the defense? Oh, man, what a sense of pride it's about. And... So there's going to be no prevent defense or letdown right here in this situation by Seattle. Out of the gun. Chancellor, he's going down this time. And the ball is out and it's picked up. And they're ruling him down, though. That was Frank Clark, the rookie. 55, Frank Clark gets inside Kyle Long and gets the sack. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Cliff Averill, number 56. Yeah, Clark recovered it, but uh, now we've got a challenge flag out from the Seattle sideline. Officials on the field said it wasn't a fumble. Seattle is challenging the ruling on the field that the quarterback was down by contact prior to losing control of the football. We'll review the play. Looks pretty close. My first thought of it was that this football, oh, there's the knee down. The knee is down. It looks like it first, first look. Well, the ball is. I think it's starting to move, though. Yeah, he pushed it down. It's going to be one of those replays i got to look at six times before I can figure it out. Frank Clark, the rookie from Michigan, taken in the second round. Yeah, that's good eye, Jim. It, is. Looks like, it looks like it could be moving as he's going to the ground. Frank Clark, Clark, rookie, second round draft pick. Well, 
Let's bring in. This one's awfully close. Let's go back to our studio. Bring in Mike Carey. How do you see this one? I see it as another close one like you had earlier. There is a strip. You see a portion of the ball move, but then we lose it. And so did he have control when he hit the ground or not? We'll see. After review, the ruling on the field stands. The fourth down for Chicago at the 15-yard line. Just so close, Mike, and I think not enough evidence for them to overturn Seattle the ruling on the field, right? With a timeout. Yeah, that's the way I see it. It just was too tight to call Pressure, one way or other. Down. Not enough to confirm or reverse. Thank you, Mike. Third and 15. Lawson, who was recruited while in high school by Pete Carroll to try to go to USC, but opted to go to Notre Dame. He's going to dump it off here to Rodgers. Jaquiz Rodgers gets 10 yards, but five short of the first. Now Pete Carroll first remembers running into Jimmy Clawson in the spring of Clawson's freshman year in high school. Well, shoot, by then he was already nationally known. I mean, I heard about Jimmy Clawson when he was in the eighth grade. His brothers started talking about him, and, of course, uh, the recruitment of him was USC, Notre Dame. He was probably ranked the number one recruit in the nation his senior year in high school. Punt number 10 for O'Donnell. <laughs> that goes for 47 yards. So the Bears are going to drop to 0-3. And since 1990, here are the teams that started 0-3 and, and went on to the playoffs. That 92 Chargers team, just remember that one for a moment. The 95 Lions, and the last one, the 98 Bills. There you see Wade Phillips. But the 92 Chargers, John Fox was on that staff. Defensive back coach under Bobby Ross, is that right? That's correct, yes. That they lost three really tough games that year to start. And had a brutal schedule at the start as they had this year as Rawls runs out for another six, maybe seven. He's moving in on a hundred. That puts him four shy. That carry. Third team since 91 to punt on its first 10 possessions. Hmm. Well, make no bones about it. I thought the game planned by the Chicago Bears, look, you can plan all you want. When you get out man, there's not much you can do. Seattle, the emotion, Cam Chancellor coming back home. Suck it down, three. No matter what you were going to do today, it was going to be tough sledding. Rawls about a half yard short. Next Sunday, a national game early from London. The Jets and the Dolphins on CBS. And then that'll be followed by regional action. Many of you seeing Kansas City at undefeated Cincinnati. Plus other regional coverage. It all starts with this crew. There they are, San Francisco, the team that's going to take you to Super Bowl 50. It all gets started. Special edition of the NFL today at 9 a.m. Eastern. Third and one. Yes, sir. Roll was rushing in. Over the top they go to Jackson. He's got a first down. So where are the Bears going? Off of this start with a new coaching staff. Significant issues they're dealing with already. What do you think? Well, they're about what I thought they would be. It's a team in an incredible transition. A couple things. I think John Fox has assembled a really good coaching staff. Offensive coordinator Adam Gase. Then you got Vic Fangio on the defensive side. You know what I look at this team and say? You're playing the rest of this year to see if you're going to be on the roster next year. A pass through and out of bounds. And how about the draft, the first draft for this new staff? Well, John Fox, pretty excited about the draft. Kevin White, I think he is physically every bit is one of those top echelon talents in the league. Eddie Goldman's played well. You know, every, as you looked at Lankford, they're really happy about. How about Adrian Amos? Fifth round draft pick. John Fox said to us, 
if we'd have taken him in the second round, I'd have been happy. I would have had no problems with it. So they think they're on the right road. A few pickups, the players they like that are here, a couple good drafts, then they can compete again, maybe for a playoff spot. And that's a carry by Rawls, and he becomes the first running back other than Marshawn Lynch to rush for 100 yards in a game for Seattle. That was back in 2012 when Robert Turbin did it, last other than Lynch. Two-minute warning in Seattle. Early headline. Roethlisberger carted off a knee injury in the Steelers' victory over the Rams. And how about the turnaround by the Falcons scoring the last 25 on the Cowboys to go to 3-0. and And it was wild at the end. Super game by Andy Dalton and A.J. Green. Look at this effort by Green as they drop the Ravens to 0-3 and climb to 3-0 and with an important divisional road win. Of course, other headlines out there, like the Eagles finally getting a win today. Neutral zone infraction, number 99 defense. His movement into the neutral zone created a reaction by the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Indianapolis coming on late and then surviving a two-point tying attempt to win at Tennessee. Look at the numbers again. Just normal stuff for Antonio Brown. Julio Jones, 12 for 164 and two touchdowns. A.J. Green, over 200 yards and two touchdowns. And Tom Brady's 400th career touchdown pass in the blowout win over Jacksonville. Third and two, and another first down picked up, this time over to Baldwin. The Raiders impressive today in their win at Cleveland. They sure were. Uh, the, when you watch the Raiders, Derek Carr, what a difference from last year to this year. Stronger looking, more sure, and physically, the football, it just explodes out of his hand. So they got to be happy about that. It's been 13 years since the Bears were last shut out against Tampa. And their quarterback that day was Henry Burris, his only career start. Yeah, the Raiders today, they got Cooper over 100 in receiving yardage. Latavius Murray over 100 rushing. He'll be taking on the Bears next week. Went up to Canada and played quite a few years. Again, it was 2013, the last time Seattle shut out an opponent that came on the road against the Giants. Well, confidence builder in both sides of the football for Seattle today. The defense, that explains itself, the big zero. But the offense made some plays, got comfortable here in the second half, and it's just got to make them feel good or they'll even build the morale for practice this coming week. And you know everyone's going to be talking about Cam returns, Chancellor returns, and they get the shutout. You knew it was going to be a very big order for the offense of the Bears without Cutler, without Jeffrey here to get anything going but still you have to pull it off and they have tonight on cbs begins with a season premiere of 60 minutes and vladimir putin and donald trump followed by the series finale of csi only cbs coach richard gets dunked as they celebrate on the sideline and that should do it Yep. Six nothing game at halftime, and then all of a sudden, the second half begins with a jolt. A lot of good players on this Seattle team. Two Super Bowls in a row. Cam Chancellor coming back. So many things and factors on their side. It took them a while, but once they get rolling, they are really almost impossible to stop here in Seattle. Jimmy Clausen, you know, listen. Really can't pick apart anything that he did wrong today. He played the, the way he was supposed to to try to give his team a chance to win, but it's just there was nothing there to really accomplish from the quarterback position. Well, they never turned it over, but they managed only 146 total yards. As the Bears drop to 0-3, and, and Seattle gets its first victory of the season. 26 to nothing, Seattle over Chicago.
Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes, followed by the series finale of CSI. For Phil and Tracy, Jim Nance saying so long from Seattle. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. James Brown in New York. After this.